Okay, we have Drake head coach Darren DeVries. Uh, we will start with an opening statement from coach, and then we'll go to questions. For those media members out there, once again, uh, if you have a question for coach, use the raise hand function. And then once you're called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. Please note that coach cannot see you. So if you give your name and affiliation, we appreciate it. But in the meantime, coach, if you can give us an opening statement. Yeah, first of all, uh, congratulations to, to USC um, on advancing. You know, uh, uh, obviously we're we're disappointed that uh, we have to go home, but um, you know, certainly proud of um, our guys' effort um, not only tonight but this entire season. And and uh, you hate to see it end, but um, you know, I felt like you know we fought to the bitter bitter end today and and um, came up a little short. <clears throat> Okay, our first question is going to come from Harry Schroeder. Harry, go ahead. Yeah, Harry Schroeder here from Valley Hoops Insider. Darren, congratulations on a great season. I mean, I know it stings today. Can you put any kind of perspective on the really what is a historic season in, in Drake in Drake Bulldog basketball history? Yeah, as I, I've told you know people all year. I just love these guys. I, I love you know what they're all about and and how you know they've had to you know. Uh, be so resilient all year uh, to get to this point, to get to this game. Uh, you know, they're an incredible bunch of guys to coach and be around every day, and um, I, I couldn't be more proud of them. Okay, next we're going to go with Paul Oren. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, Paul here. Uh, Tank, he's 16 minutes in the first half. Looked like he was moving good early, a couple of baskets. Did something tighten up at halftime or anything? Yeah, our, our our plan, you know, he wanted to play a little bit longer in that first half and, and see, you know, instead of coming in and out, you know, get, he felt like it got sore the other night. So uh, we left him go a little longer stretch until, you know, basically right through halftime. And then, um, you know, it was pretty sore coming out of the halftime locker room and, and we just made a decision to um, to not, not push it any further. And, and um, uh, so we decided to sit him that second half. <clears throat> Okay, our next question comes from Mark Emmert. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Darren, Mark Emmert, Des Moines Register. Uh, the second half, I think you missed 21 of your first 24 shots. Was that their length catching up with you a little bit there, or maybe some fatigue, or what, what do you think happened? Yeah, I think it was a combination of both. Uh, you know, their zone uh, really bothered us. That, that length was hard for us to get in the interior and finish. Um, you know, we were trying to get it inside to, you know, you know, anywhere around the rim, you know, where we could get some scores or some easy baskets. Uh, they they just did a nice job. They're extremely long, and 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 we couldn't get to the spots we wanted to and finish over them, and and weren't able to get maybe as clean the looks as we would have liked on on even the th the threes against the zone. So, I, th I think it was a combination of all those things. And yeah, we we certainly got fatigued in that second half, uh, you know, a little bit. And and uh, but like I said, I I thought the guys continued to fight, and 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 uh, we just didn't have quite enough to to get back into it. Once again, if you have a question for Coach DeVries, please raise your hand, use the raise hand function, and uh, we'll call on you. Mark, it looks like you have another question for him. Hold on here just a second. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Darren, what was the impact of not having a Tank in the second half, do you think? Well, I think the impact was, you know, Tank's such a good finisher on the interior, you know, and that's um, in, in the first half we were able to get it in there on their zone, and Tank was a big part of that. Uh, so not having him and then not just maybe not having that, that luxury of, of subbing some guys a little bit more, um, that, which we would have liked to have done and kept us a little fresher. Uh, but definitely in that zone, that's that's where he's so good is on that interior of, of finishing and um, elevating you know up at the rim. Okay, we have another question from Harry Schrader. Go ahead, Harry. Yeah, Darren, talk about uh, Garrett Sturt's game today. I think he has a uh, five point seven boards, four assists, four steals, four or five steals. I mean, he just kind of, for, for me, kind of epitomizes what you guys are about. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he he left it all out there. I mean, he was he was trying to make every winning play he could in that second half to keep us in it. You know, you know, getting steals, you know, offensive rebounds, diving for loose balls. Um, you know, again, he he was tremendous. Uh, you know, as as were a lot of the guys. You know. Uh, you look at, you know, we had 17 offensive rebounds and I, that, you know, was Garrett and everybody else just, um, you know, trying to go find them, go, go get them on a night where we just, we couldn't, we couldn't, you know, score consistently in that second half, but they continued to try to pursue the ball and give us extra opportunities. 
All right, we're going to go to Paul Oren next. Go ahead, Paul. Can you just kind of summarize what these last couple of days have been like? I mean, all of the, I mean, you're, you're sitting on a Zoom call wearing a mask at the NCAA tournament. Like, it's, it's kind of surreal, this whole experience. Can you just kind of put into words kind of what this has all been like? It's been awesome. I mean, we've we've had a blast. To, um, you know, we've we've really enjoyed this opportunity uh, to be in the tournament, um, to win a game in advance, and um, you know, we we don't um, you know mind wearing the mask. We'd have loved to wear them for another another week here if we if we could have. But uh, you know, from from our standpoint, uh, we're just thankful that we got got here and got this chance to play. Okay, our next question comes from Kevin McCaskill Jr. Uh, Kevin, go ahead. It's Kevin McCaskill Jr., FP Sports out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, how much time do you take before you start recruiting in your off-season program? Uh, you know, recruiting is, you know, pretty much year-round, so, you know, you continue to do that. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll give our guys some time off for sure. You know, they they need a break, deserve a break, and, and um, you know, let everybody – you know, heal up and get away for, for a while and, um, you know, en enjoy being, you know, college guys here, you know, for a few weeks. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start back up, um, you know, sometime down the road here. Okay, our next question comes from Mark Freund. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Darren, Mark Freund, WHO 13. Uh, I know a couple weeks ago you had said everyone's coming back uh, for next year. Do you anticipate that's still the case? Yeah, we do. I mean, well, um, you know, as, as far as we know, that's, uh, you know, that was is everybody's intention. So, you know, we'll meet this week to make sure that um, uh, that is still the case. But um, like I said, uh, you know, we're really excited about this group. Uh, it's a very close group and, and uh, um, you know, we're excited to see what they can do this off season to 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 get ready for another another run at it next year. All right, we'll go back to Mark Emmer. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Darren, so in light of that, um, what do you hope those guys learn from this experience that's going to help them in the offseason and going into the next season? It seems like a big luxury for you. Yeah, I, I think we'll take a lot from this, you know, for playing both games. I, I think there were some things that, um, you know, just going through it is, is an experience. And, and that experience, if, if we are fortunate enough to make it back, um, you know, will be something very, very helpful for, for the guys that um, are returning for sure. So, um, you know, it's a, in, in these cases, it's a, it's a win or go home at the end of the year. You know, it's even different than a conference tournament if you don't have, you know, if you have postseason. So um, the urgency and, you know, that you have to play with. And, and I thought our guys did that in both games and, and, and really fought. So, uh, again, I'm excited to see, you know, what we can do and improve on uh, heading into next year. Okay, our next question comes from Matthew Judy. Matthew, go ahead. Hey, Coach Matthew Judy with Local 5 here in Des Moines. You mentioned most guys are coming back. Obviously, you're adding more talent uh, coming in from recruiting, notably Tucker. Fans are going to have high hopes. What should fans' expectations be, and, and what are your expectations of the team going into next year? Well, you know, from our standpoint, you're starting over. You, I mean, you, you nothing carries over from one year to the next. Um, so you, you still got to, you know, go – Go work on it. You have to stay hungry and um, you know and get better. You know we uh, we we've got a lot of really you know good guys in the program. They love to work. They love to be in the gym, and I think um, you know e each individual still has um, some growth that that can take place, which is a good thing. Uh, we want to always continue to try to get better and better, both individually and as a team. And and um, I'm looking forward to to doing that uh, here this spring, summer, and fall with them uh, to see you know, what type of progress we can make. <clears throat> we have time for one or two more questions if anyone has them. If you do, please use the raise hand function. We do have one. Uh, this is last question. Uh, we go back to Harry Schrader. Go ahead, Harry. Uh, Darren, they just announced that Oregon's uh, going to miss their next game with COVID protocols and all that. And, and I just want to go back to that issue for you guys just – how difficult was it once you got to Indy? Or obviously, I've known you know we've talked about it. It's been tough all year long. But how difficult or how different was it there in Indianapolis for you guys once you got there? Well, I, I thought um, I thought it was all set up very well here. I mean, we were certainly um, 
know, isolated once we got here for about 18 hours, each in everybody's individual room while we waited for two different sets of, of tests to come back. Uh, once you got those tests, then we tested every every day. Um, uh, and you you weren't allowed to leave the hotel. So uh, you we were, um, I mean, I mean, it was it was a seemingly a pretty secure bubble that um, you know we've been in this last week. All right, coach. Thanks. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> All right, we will have sophomore guard Joseph Yesifu here in a few minutes. Once again, if you have questions for Joseph, please use the raise hand function. And we got Joseph here. So uh, once again, if media members, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. And when called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. Once again, reminder, Joseph cannot see you. He can only hear you. So please give him your name and your affiliation. We'll start with Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Go ahead, Kevin. Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, you tripled your scoring output from last season to this season. What did you work on in the extended off season? Uh, I just constantly worked out. Um, I took advantage of the quarantine time uh, with my trainer uh, and Nick. Um, he definitely been a huge factor. Then working out with my teammates when I came back over the summer. So that's definitely uh, I was. Uh, everybody kept me hungry for this season. My next question comes from Mark Emmert. Mark, go ahead. Mark Emmert, Des Moines Register. Uh, Joseph, what, what was the biggest difference for you guys in the first and second half? What, what did you see out there? It looks like you guys might have got a little tired. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got a little tired um, playing like seven. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the rotation, but um, we, we got tired and then their length really caught up to us on um, their uh, zone. But we just couldn't figure it out and they, they got the W. Okay, our next question comes from Mark Freund. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, uh, Mark Freund, WHO 13. It seemed like USC's length was uh, really tough. Uh, closeouts seemed to force a lot of kind of bad misses. Is, is that how you experienced it, particularly in the second half there, where the long arms are really causing you problems? Uh, yes, sir. The, uh, the Mobley twins, they, they're the real deal, and credit to them. Um, but, the lo yeah, the long guard, their length is – we talked about that uh, yesterday when we were going through their, uh, our matchups and stuff. We knew that was going to be a huge thing, a rebounding. But we, I feel like our team left it all out there, and I couldn't be more prouder than the guys. All right, our next question comes from Chad Linskog. Chad, go ahead. Hey, Joseph, uh, Tank obviously missed four weeks, but he came back for the first four and then played again today. What does he add? How did he make you guys better, you know, in these two games he played once he returned? Uh, Tank is a warrior, man. Um, coming back from having surgery, that's that's a huge thing. And he he battled through it. Uh, he, he said from the beginning that he wanted to come back. Uh, so his, his, um, he, he definitely really – uh, helped us today, brought energy, rebounded for us. He did everything he could. So that yeah, credit to uh, Tank. And we're going to go back to Mark Emmert. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Joseph, you guys got to play two games here on the biggest stage in your sports. What do you hope that does for you going forward as a team? Uh, we're definitely more hungry. Um, we tasted the NCAA tournament and since uh, 2008, so we're definitely more hungry. We're definitely going to get back here again, and it's going to be a different story. Uh, next question comes from Paul Oren. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, so I was just going to ask kind of the same thing. How do you build off of this? You know, particularly you guys are going to have a lot of pieces next year with you, with Roman, with, with Hank. I mean, all these guys have said they're coming back. How do you how do you build? How fun are the practices going to be when everyone's healthy? Uh, it's going to be really competitive. I know everybody, not just me. Everybody's going to be hungry. Everybody's constantly going to be in the gym like they already are, because we we want to make it back here again. We will make it back here again. Okay. If we if anyone has any more questions for Joseph, please use the raise hand function. We'll give it another ten seconds or so. I don't see anything right now. Nope, 
Doesn't look like it. All right, we're good. Yeah. Joseph, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, safe travels home. Thank you. So that's it for the Drake University postgame news conference. Uh, transcript of Coach DeVries' interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. Once again, www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA's digital media hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. That's www.ncaa.veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E.com. Thanks everyone for joining us.